One of the most common practices in all of real estate is for a landlord to require a new tenant to provide a sum of money when they first move into an apartment and initiate a new lease. This sum of money is most commonly structured in the form of a security deposit, which a tenant gives to a landlord who then holds it in escrow until the tenant moves out. An alternative to a security deposit is something called a move-in fee. I encourage you to only charge one-time move-in fees. There are several reasons for this. First, a security deposit is money that has to be held in escrow. It's essentially the tenant's money unless there's damages in place once they move out. For me, it's super annoying to have money sitting in a bank account that I'm not allowed to touch. I feel like it's a much better option to charge a tenant a move-in fee that's lower than the standard security deposit for your market and you make it non-refundable. The tenant is happier because they're paying a lot less than what's normal normal for a security deposit and you're happier because you can actually spend the money. It's a win-win all around. The standard cost to charge for a move-in fee can vary drastically between markets and even landlords within those markets. To give at least some kind of a ballpark though, according to apartments.com, a good rule of thumb is that a move-in fee will roughly be 33 to 50% of the monthly rent amount. Now obviously, in order to make a move-in fee an attractive alternative to a security deposit, you should find out what the standard charge is for security deposit within your market and then make sure that your move-in fee is substantially less than that. As I understand it, the most common charge for a security deposit is the equivalent of one month's rent, but this can vary widely depending on the market, the individual landlord, and the quality of the tenant. If a potential tenant is considered higher risk, meaning they barely meet the standard income, credit, and or background check requirements that you want to see in an applicant, sometimes a landlord may offer the apartment on the condition that the applicant pays a larger security deposit. This way, the landlord can offset their risk. Oh, and by the way, just in case you're unaware of what's common practice here, typically a landlord is going to require both the security deposit and the first month's rent to be collected before they'll provide keys to a tenant. So if you're gonna be charging a move-in fee instead of a security deposit, you'll also wanna make sure that you receive payment for that before you provide keys. Again, the most common amount to charge for a security deposit is equivalent to one month's rent, but depending on the market, and circumstances, some landlords may charge only half of that, or on the flip side, they may charge more. I've heard about some landlords requiring security deposits as large as three months worth of rent. It all ultimately depends on the individual landlord, the tenant, and the market. One last thought on this before we move on, a lot of states have a legal limit on the amount a landlord can charge for both a security deposit and a move-in fee. You're definitely gonna wanna do some research in order to figure out what the rules and customs are for your area. Once you find out what's standard for security deposits in your market, all you have to do is make sure your move-in fee is significantly lower and boom, you're in the game. Remember, a good rule of thumb for this is to charge somewhere between 33 and 55% of the monthly rent amount. Now, something else to be aware of when it comes to charging move-in fees instead of security deposits, when you do this, you're actually increasing the income of your property. As a house hacker, at first glance, this might not seem that significant, but in commercial real estate, the value of a property is exclusively tied to the income that the property produces. People who invest in large multifamily will do whatever they can to increase the income of their investment property because as the income increases, the value of the property itself, meaning the money that you can sell the property for, also increases. According to the IRS, a security deposit is not considered income unless you end up keeping it because your tenant did not live up to the terms of the lease. But move-in fees, on the other hand, are considered income. Because the move-in fee is a one-time non-refundable charge, it is in fact income for the property. This means that your property is more valuable, literally worth more money if you ever decide to sell it, simply because you charge move-in fees instead of security deposits. Now, one of the things you may be concerned with if you go the route of charging move-in fees is what happens in the event that a tenant causes severe damage to a unit. You might be thinking with a security deposit in place, at least the money will be there in the event that it's needed right? Well, this is not necessarily true. If you do a good job vetting tenants before you lease to them, more often than not, you'll be returning the security deposit, at least in part, to the tenant when they leave. In the event that a worst case scenario actually does happen and a tenant leaves a unit in complete disrepair, if you think about it, a security deposit equivalent to only one to three months worth of rent 
probably isn't gonna help very much. You'll most likely have to spend a lot more money beyond what you received as a security deposit in order to get the unit back in shape and rent ready. So for me, having an additional way to generate income by charging a move-in fee and then making sure that I have ample savings in place to cover me in the event of a worst case scenario is a far better position to be in than having to deal with security deposits. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a like as that helps YouTube show our content to more people. If you found this video insightful, here's another one I think you're gonna enjoy. See you there.